Hey guys, this is Seb from Specialty Z. Uh, in this video, I want to demonstrate the logging of the wideband sensors, the factory ones, using Ecutech, and the differences that you may see using an aftermarket wideband gauge. So this car, you can see, has an air-fuel ratio gauge or a wideband gauge, as they're commonly called. And we are also using the Dynos wideband air-fuel ratio output. So the beauty is we can reference this one, we can use the, reference the Dyno one, and then we can also reference the one on Ecutech, which uses the factory sensors. So we're getting three different readings, and we can verify to ensure that we have a consistent and accurate reading. And the reason I'm bringing this up is the factory sensors are very sensitive to heat, especially with supercharged setups or single turbo setups. Um, even then so, in other applications where they can get hot enough, as the temperature changes with heat, the hotter it gets, your air fuel ratio won't be consistent. So we're gonna demonstrate that today using this car. It has a single turbo kit on it and we'll do some pulls watching the factory gauge and then we'll see what the factory sensors are outputting and we'll compare it again to the dyno all right so we're going to get ready to make a pull here you can see our white band gauge we have our software logging it will auto record So you'll see that it went a little lean at the top. And what we're gonna do now is we'll pull up our log to see what the factory sensors read. So you can see at the top we were in the 12s, mid 12s, even the high 12s. And this is uh, important because if you're a remote, you know, getting a remote tune and all you're using as a reference is the factory sensor, it can lead you astray. So here we go. We've got AFR average. We have our independent bank one and bank two AFRs, our engine speed, and you'll see that at the top, the AFR average is reporting 11.1, bank one is 11.2, bank two is 11.0, and that's at 6,500 RPM. Uh, you saw the, the uh, aftermarket AEM gauge was reading in the 12s. So what do you trust, right? I mean, look, this is even showing in the 10s. This is why you can't say one source is the best source. So again, look at, it's showing that we've got a pretty rich conservative air fuel ratio. Our AAM, ga AAM gauge did not. It was, again, reading in the mid 12s. So let's check and see what the dyno reading has to show. 
All right, so here is our air fuel ratio. And you're gonna see that there's engine speed. And as we go up, you're gonna see that it actually starts to lean out. And the dyno wideband is doing exactly what the AEM wideband is doing, right? So you have two sources that show the same readings. So take a look at that, 12 sevens, really lean, right? It's not what you wanna be running on forced induction. So again, if you were to trust the factory sensor output, you'd think that it was plenty rich but you have two other independent sensors that are showing the same lean mixture at the top. So this is why if you have me remote tune your car, I always ask that you have an aftermarket wideband set up so we can reference to make sure that the factory sensor is doing what it's supposed to in terms of reading correctly and we can ensure that we're not running too rich or too lean. So on the next video, what we're gonna do is we'll richen it up and you'll see what happens to the readings on all three again. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is richen up the mixture according to the AEM gauge, reading lean, and also the dyno's air fuel ratio, okay? So we've updated the tune and then we'll see what the factory sensors show and we'll do a pass showing what the AEM gauge reads. So you can see that that pass was all the way mid to high 11s. Looked really, really good. So let's take a look and see what our log looks like. Pull this up, show the parameters we need. Shut the car off so that we can hear a little better. All right, so here we go. You're going to see that it flat lines all the way to pig rich. So, 10-0, 6,600. So if you're just having your car remotely tuned and you're just going off of these factory sensors, you would think, oh man, it's too, it's too rich. We got to pull a lot of fuel out of it right and uh, unfortunately that's not the case it won't be safe so what we'll do next is we will take a look at what our dyno reads all right so here's the pass we made riching it up air fuel ratio right we'll follow that as the rpms go up and you'll see that Again, our dyno backs up what the wideband gauge in the car was reading. Those high 11s that we saw, we see here as well. So again, you can't always trust one source. That's why it's always beautiful to have the proper equipment and it's also great if you have a car that's remotely tuned to have a separate wideband gauge installed in it so that you can see what it's doing and that the tuner can verify it as well. Because as, as trusting the factory sensors, you, as you'd like to, you can't. There's just no way, especially when you're dealing with 
aftermarket force induction stuff. The margin of error is too critical. And you want to ensure that it's obviously got the best possible tune that's safe and reliable and, you know, makes some power. But there's always, always stuff you have to check to ensure that everything's working correctly. So we'll do another side by side so you can see the two air fuel ratios or two wide band readings, okay? each other.